Hello everyone, it's Jonathan here, DJ Puff the Third. I'm over the allotment. I just walk out. I've done a bit of work in the past few weeks. Ah, as you can see, this end bed where my shed is. Hopefully, eventually, I'd like to get the height of the shed raised up. It's not on the base properly. I wanted the sleepers upright, not flat. But a couple of weeks ago, last week or a couple of weeks ago, I, I redone this bed and I had some topsoil, extra topsoil, and I spread it on the top and I've got some blocks. So I added some more topsoil to this new blocked border, all these yellow blocks, tan blocks, they're all new. And this end here, I'm hoping to get a water butt to catch the rainwater, but of course I've got to put a gutter on the shed as well. Uh, we'll have to see how big a water butt I can have. It might just have to be a long thin cylinder one on a base. But I do need a water butt. But it's looking pretty good this corner. I probably should have put a rhubarb there. But earlier this year at Nash's garden I had a, uh, a lot of hydrangea cuttings from the hydrangea at the front of Nash's garden and <laughs> fuck me they actually took and the roots are unbelievable and I repotted them and they packed that pot again with roots and this is a free stemmed lace cap hydrangea it's got white flowers with well, well bracts in it white with blue bracts so I put hydrangea there and on the end here is a wisteria and this is going to take a few years to grow but hopefully eventually it will make its way up here onto the top of this frame and then onto the roof and I've watered the, the both of them a bit but the, the extra topsoil came from over here and this has been a project that I've been trying to do for a long time I finally made a pond it's only a small one but finally, finally, I managed to make a pond. Oh. It was basically the blue base of a plastic chemical drum, clean, but, and I, I dug a hole and I buried it in the ground and lined it, filled around the edges with soil. And I, I finally created a pond and I've been wanting to do that for a while. I mean, originally I wanted to put it at the top of the plot, but I think it's probably just as well I've put the pond here. It's a good position and it suppresses the weeds in this corner and I can keep the edge better. And that's our house leak, Simper Vivium. And my mate in Western Australia, Billy, Billy Sherman, he was a bit of an inspiration for me in creating this pond as you can see I've got all kinds of blocks and stones and I've even got some old rotten pear trunks here so we've got the stone the wood and there's a piece of metal there which is an old, from an old fireplace and there's another piece of metal there so yeah finally I've managed to create a pond and it I had these spikes and I hammered the spikes through the um, PVC liner on the edges I think there's about four or five of them and I filled it with water and then it started to go down and then I realized that I'd actually adjusted the liner a bit and there was actually a hole in the side so I've just had to seal that with white silicone sealant and I've just stuffed 10p over the top of it so hopefully when that's dry it'll be watertight and I can fill it right to the top with rainwater so it'll be a bit deeper and then I've just got to get some water plants. I found a, a bit of crisper weed in a water butt nearby. 
and there's a couple of bricks I might get a very small lily pad or just an, I'll have to say it's a very small pond but yeah my new pond it's a bit of a habitat the birds can drink out of it and loads of insects will fall in it <laughs> sadly and Ruby the cat I just saw Ruby the black cat and she was on my father's allotment hunting it's a bit of a wilderness over there now he hasn't been here for a long time and I just picked a load of blackberries I've got a plum tree here and there's a load of plums on it it's the first time I've had a tree in this position and it's actually had a crop on it I'm amazed hopefully this will be a good things to come I've literally got plums here and there and everywhere which is good Victoria plums dark purple ones and there's the brambles the blackberries that's my lot and then there's some in here as well and I'll give them to my mother they're from the old man's plot there's my chair that I sometimes sit on and I managed to clip the the box battlements these are basically the most interesting part of my allotment and we've had an issue with caterpillars and moths invading and decimating the, um, the box plants but luckily earlier this year I made up a spray bottle of garlic water and I sprayed the garlic water onto my box battlements and they haven't been back again since so that worked and there's another one the other side and I clipped them the other week And there's a an oak tree. This is a this is an oak tree that I've just left that came up and I've just clipped it. I'll keep it clipped. And Egremont russet apple. And there is a couple on there. And I've done my best to keep no three. Well I can see three, four, five. There's five apples on there, which is a lot more than there was last year. Egremont russet. these teasel plants they're great for the insects and the wildlife dog daisies the butterflies love the dog daisies there's a gatekeeper there gatekeeper flutterby if I can get anywhere near it there they are that's a gatekeeper And we'll go check out the corner that I've actually got some crops. I think I'm going to have to pull my onions because they're just being shaded out by the um, all the pumpkins and squashes and stuff. But you can actually see an onion in there. And I'll pull them up and I'll take them to Nash's garden, take them to Barbara's. But there's another one in there. They are in there. There's a red onion here. cream coloured Californian poppy come out of nowhere borage we've got the borage plant and you can eat the flowers on this is one of probably Peter Bashford's honeybees there or a couple of them and they love the borage the flowers of these borage are just like cucumber people put them in ice when they make ice for drinks they put them in the the ice and they taste just like cucumber and they produce a lot of nectar for insects yeah and you can see some fruits coming up squash or pumpkin or some description 
only just beginning. There is actually a sweet potato plant in here somewhere, but I've had to keep bringing it to the surface because the pumpkin it will move about and this sweet potato needs as much light as it can get. It's the first one I've ever planted. There's normal potatoes as well. Four potato plants. There's actually gladioli spires in here too. And as to whether they'll flower or not, I don't know. And there's gladioli there. And there's one here. And one in the middle. I think there were more. And there's another big teasel plant here. And that'll probably go stupid next year. That teasel. Yeah. So I have actually got some crops this year, a few potatoes and squashes and pumpkins and some onions, but not much really. I don't really have the room and I haven't been too well to be honest recently. I've got another raised bed over here, but I'm not really well enough to work on another one. But at least I've managed to do this raised bed and grow something in it this year. In the front, I've modelled the front and put some plants in. Another flutterby. And I managed to clip this. This is a jasmine, a yellow flowered jasmine, a winter jasmine, another folium, I think it's called. And I managed to clip that back a week or two ago. And uh, this has been here a long time. I think it's a Nosmanthus, it's called a Nosmanthus. And eventually over the years it's got bigger and stronger and I've been clipping it. So I've got one, two, three tiers of foliage here. And I'm going to keep trying to clip it in that shape. Looks pretty good. One, two, three. And we've got a little conifer here, just an old Christmas conifer. Get one a year and I plant them. And I've got two bigger ones over there. This is the biggest conifer, just like the one that I just showed you. I do like them. There's that one there. And there's one over here as well which is pretty much the same age Picea and if you rub it with your fingers it smells like black currants but as you can see I have done some work there's your flutter by again I've done some work to this side it looks a bit tidier this side I've been here quite a lot since lockdown, but I haven't been too well. Looks a bit tidier. I'm thankful it looks a bit tidier. I just hope my health improves. Been very nervous recently. And I'm on an anti-anxiety pill called Cetraline at the moment. I think I might have to end it there. Well, thanks for joining me, especially to check out my new pond, which I hope to top up again. I'm coming up for 15 minutes now, so I'm going to have to end it here. It'll take an age to load up Wi-Fi. And that new border I've done with the tan blocks, and I topped it up with the soil that actually came from where the pond is. So it all worked out well. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there for now. Thanks for joining me. Comments if, if you like, thumb up, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.